Good morning, YouTube. Today is February 3rd, 2018, and this is your daily episode blog number 25. Um, just wanted to quickly go over how to set up a free instance of a VPS in AWS. Uh, before we do that, I'll just quickly look at my portfolio. We are at 0.61 BTC in holdings. Uh, we are floating around probably $5,500. The bot is doing pretty well right now, and it is almost up a full 10% since I started last week. So we're doing pretty damn well. But it, again, like I said, it, I have to keep modifying my settings because the bot is not buying anything right now. So I will only buy when things just look really super discount, and I feel safe that way. But enough of that. Uh, let me go ahead and show you how everything is running so far and just real quick on the memory usage on my profit trailer bot my VPS is at 85 percent and CPU is at 14 percent 10 percent and there it's more than enough to be running this bot uh, again in my profit trailer I'm you see here we're almost at 10 percent if this is 1 1 this is officially a 10 percent but we could close we could say this is pretty close to the accurate number uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and set up our account. So first thing you will need to go to is aws.amazon.com and go ahead and create an account. You also have to link a credit card um, so that if there is any additional charges, it could charge. First thing I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and pick a region that I haven't played around with. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Paris for now uh, because I have instances in pretty much all locations. I've been testing it around uh, just for you guys. Oregon has been doing the best. I want to really try Tokyo, but I have not yet. Solar is bad. Okay, uh, depending on where you're located, you could go ahead and select any of these. Oregon is actually one of the cheaper zones. Um, they have a huge farm out there. So that's why I have my services in Oregon. But you could definitely choose whatever you feel like is closer to home. You could choose also wherever you think the Binance, how where the Binance service are located. So. I'm pretty sure in Tokyo there's some Binance servers there. So that's why I really want to go ahead and create it in Tokyo. But for this case, we're going to just use Paris. Um, once you hit Paris um, in my region, okay, I want to create an instance in Paris. I'll go ahead and click EC2. And if you don't see EC2 there, you just click on services and click on EC2. It brings you to this exact same page. The first thing you want to do is launch an instance. You want to create yourself a Microsoft Windows Server 2016 base. I'll go ahead and select. I want to do general purpose T2 micro free tier el eligible. And I'm going to go ahead and review and launch. And launch. I need to create a key pair. So this is how to decrypt the administrator password. So I'm going to go to create a new key pair. I want to create this call Paris. I'm going to hit the download. And now I have this key pair. So I'm going to go ahead and get this file, save it out to my desktop for now, and we'll come back to it. And I'm going to hit Launch Instances. So make sure you have your key, uh, your key pair file saved somewhere safe. I'm going to go ahead and view my instances. And the first thing I want to check is the security group that this instance is associated with. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Wizard 1. And if you look here, under inbound rules, under this security group, you'll see that the TCP 3389 port is open to everyone in the world. This is what that means, 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, everyone in the world. I want to modify the settings so that my system, the system that's at home, is the only computer that can access my VPS. So I want to I don't want any hackers trying to RDP into my system and potentially get into my system and modify my profit trailer settings. I don't want to do that. So the first thing I will need to do is I need to hit edit. And I will need the IP address of my internet connection. Now, the easiest way to look for that is you go to Google and type in what's my IP and it will tell you at the top and that's your IP address. I'll go ahead and now paste this IP address here and I'll just slash 32 so it's only that IP address only. The second thing you will need to do is also open up the communication port where Profit Trailer is running. If you want to see this on your computer and you don't need to log on to your VPS to see 
this window, you'll need to open up that port that profit trailer is running. As you can see here, my profit trailer is running on port 8081. Okay, so I'm going to add a new rule. I'm going to do custom TCP, and I'm going to do 8081. And to be honest, I really don't mind the whole internet seeing my profit trailer monitoring. I'm going to set up a password on it, but I have set my profit trailer so that you cannot make any configurations here. The only thing is you're allowed to only view. So viewing is not a problem. I want to be able to view it from my iPhone. I want to view it from my work computer or anywhere else. I want to be able to hit this dashboard in any place. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with it, just put in your IP address here. It's recommended that you should only put your IP address to see the dashboard. However, I want to see it through my mobile device. I want to see it through any system. If I have this URL and I know the password to my profit trailer, I, I want to log into it. And that's what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone at 8081, um, open to all. I'm going to go ahead and save. So that is done. Let's go to our instances and we should see our T2 micro instance now pretty much ready. First thing we'll need to do is we'll right click on this instance and hit connect. I'm going to go ahead and download the remote desktop file. And I'm going to move this, this file to my desktop. And I'm going to call this AWS VPS. Paris. That's something for me to understand. Hey, if I ever want to connect to my VPS, this is the file I need to click on. Next thing you will need to do is get password. I'm going to go ahead and choose the key pair file. And I called it Paris.pem. Remember the file we downloaded earlier. I'm going to go ahead and say decrypt password, and you can see the password here. I'm going to right click, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'm going to hit close. So now we're done with AWS. I'm going to look here, I'm going to go to my AWS VPS Paris. I'm going to hit, I'm going to double click on it, I'm going to hit connect. I'm going to paste the password that we just copy pasted and say yes. So from here, after you log on to your VPS, all you really need to do is set up your profit trailer, and that's about it. And then one thing that you might want to also look into, um, and you might run into a problem later down the road, is in under the security groups here, your port or your computer, I'm sorry, your source might change. So if for whatever reason you're not able to connect to your remote desktop system, please make sure your port is open, or excuse me, your uh, source IP is set correctly. Uh, to give you an example, if you're on Comcast, I'm on Comcast, if my Comcast modem ever restarts, there is a chance my IP address will change. So I have to go in here, type in what is my IP, and type in my new IP address, okay? And you will hit save. I highly don't recommend you leaving this port open to the whole internet. Um, I think it's a security risk, so please don't do that. Um, you should only have a few trusted IP addresses that can actually access your VPS. So, let's go into the VPS. Um, I'm gonna say no to this. I don't need it to discover other PCs on the network. Uh, the first thing you want to do, I, I want to anyways, is to change the password for the administrative account. So I'm going to go ahead into the control panel. I'm going to go to users and accounts. Users and accounts. Manage another account. I don't know why I have to do it this way. I'm going to click on administrator and change the password. Put in the current password and then type in a new password. Give yourself a hint, super hint. And now you're set. So make sure you could go ahead and connect to your new uh, your instance with the new password that you created. So I'm going to go ahead and click on AWS VPS Paris. Hit connect. Type in your password. Make sure you could click yes and make sure it does work. Okay. Before we go ahead and modify all the, our other settings, right? So now we are in. Once you install Profit Trailer and you have everything up and running, you will need to modify the firewall rules on the server for uh, inbound connection 
on port 8080. So we'll need to go to the firewall. So you got profit trailer all set up and you want to be able to see the dashboard from anywhere. We had to set up a security group firewall to allow port 8080 in. We also need to let the Windows server know port, hey, please allow port 8081 in as well. Okay, so under inbound rules, so again, how did I get here? I just hit start, type in firewall, this pops up. I'm going to add a new rule. I'm going to say port, hit next, TCP. I want to do port 8081, hit next, allow this connection, hit next, next. Any day now. Oh, specify a name. I uh, say I'm going to give it a name. Profit Trailer Dashboard. Hit finish. And then you're all set. So now once you installed Profit Trailer and you used the uh, configuration port as 8081, everything's golden. You should be able to see, access your Profit Trailer uh, using any computer on the dashboard. So how did I get this URL? Well, the URL here is based upon the DNS name. So let's go back to my EW, um, AWS instance that I created. I'm going to go back to instances. And this is after you install Profit Trailer. I'm not going to go into the Profit Trailer settings. But after you install Profit Trailer and you can make sure everything's working, you'll see this DNS name here. You copy the DNS name. There's actually a copy to clipboard button. You open up an, oops, you, let me copy this again. And then type in colon 8081. Colon means a hey, connected to this port. So, and you will hit enter and you will see your dashboard. Obviously, profit trailer is not set up on the instance that we just created here. So you will not see a dashboard. But if we did, that's what you will see the dashboard like I did. I made it here. As you can see, this one is set up in a different region, and those are the settings I had to do so that I could see the dashboard from any any system. Okay. So let me go ahead and show you guys. Uh, finally, we're pretty much done, but I'll go ahead and show you guys the charges I racked up and some of the mistakes I did personally. Um, you should not have any charges but you can see I am already charged 99 cents in the first three days and I was charged two dollars last uh, last month it's because I was creating a whole bunch of random things I, I created you know but you should not run into that issue but if you do see some charges go to your billing again billing click on the month and go to bills and you'll see your charges completely. And you can see here. This is outbound. Okay. So for example, this is transferring data out. So every time I visit Profit Trailer's website, it's sending me data, and that data is actually costing a little bit of money. So it looks like I have used 1.812 gigabytes of outbound data. Um, it also, when it makes API calls to Binance, it does that. So this is fine. I, I'm, I'm totally okay with 16 cents. Um, maybe I'll pay, I don't know. I feel like I'll pay a couple bucks at the end of the uh, end of the month on the usage of bandwidth because Profit Trailer does use a little bit more bandwidth. Uh, and Elastic IP, this is just something that I just totally goofed up on. Um, I created an Elastic IP and I didn't have it set to an instance and it's just racked up charges for me. So please don't do that. Make sure uh, you don't create any Elastic IPs. Also Route 53, I created one and it cost me 50 cents. So overall, what you should be saying is only this here. About, you know, maybe 8 cents a day uh, and times that by 30. So you'll be like three dollars at most you'll be paying for it at the very beginning on your instance as well uh, this is just my personal opinion and something that might help you when you do initial setup because your instance will run out of CPU power while you're installing Java or Chrome perhaps when you go into your instance make sure that you set this instance to uh, where is it
Okay, I, I don't see it here. I don't think they might do it in Paris location. But I wanted to change this to... I guess they don't do it in Paris. What you could do is you could change your instance. And let's just go to a different region just so that you guys understand this. Let's go to Oregon real quick. If you right click on the instance, you could change the instance settings to T2 Unlimited. And I recommend that so that if your computer, when you're doing the initial setup, it needs a little bit more horsepower because the T2 Micro doesn't have enough horsepower. It'll give you the horsepower it needs temporarily. It's just based upon usage. So if you're exceeding the CPU limit that is provided on the system, it will give you that additional CPU and it won't lag your system and you just pay for the extra CPU usage. So it will be a few additional cents. So go ahead and change that to a T2 limited, Unlimited. Um, my system never reaches that threshold ever again so I don't have to pay anything extra. But if your system did require some little bit of additional CPU power, paying a few extra cents for that limited amount of time I think is a great uh, option to have. Okay. So uh, that concludes my video. Hopefully this was beneficial to some of you guys out there trying to set up a free instance of, of VPS for your profit trailer on AWS. Thanks.